I love this Andante from the A minor suite. It's in C major itself, but it's one of my favorite movements of Bach. And to be able to play this music is a challenge because it's extremely difficult. And of course, being such fine music, you want to do it justice. I'm the principal second violin in the Australian Chamber Orchestra. This is my 17th year now in the same role, and I still love it. Uh, the role of the second violinist is much of a, an inner voice with the violas. We are more of a rhythmic section than the first violins, but then we also have a melodic role, and it's more of a supporting role to the first violins. I love playing second violin. I played second violin quite early on in my career and I've always loved it and I actually prefer it to playing first violin now. I'm the very lucky custodian of a 1759 J.B. Guadagnini violin. It's a very dark, rich, velvety tone, and I think that really suits the role of a second violin to support the higher frequencies and the higher tones of the first violins. I first saw the violin 15 years ago, and I've been in love with it ever since. In searching for it, Richard Tognetti went to Hong Kong and he brought back to Australia in a very excited way um, two Guadagnini's, who, which were very different actually. And it was quite clear when we all heard this Guadagnini over the other one, which was our favourite. Richard went to David Murray at the Commonwealth Bank and it didn't take much to persuade David Murray how beautiful a violin it was and what a fine investment it was, so the bank bought it. The ACO's had this violin now for 15 years um, and it was played by Richard and now it's played by me. I mean, you look after it like you would a child, <laughs> as carefully as possible, with as much love as possible, because, you know, it's an, an extension of, of your body, really, when, when you're a violinist. It's your voice box. The late 1600s into the 1700s in Italy was considered the golden period of the violin making. You had Amati first and then you have Stradivarius and the Guarneri family and Guadagnini. The most famous place of violin making is Cremona. That's where Stradivarius and Amati and Guarneri made their violins. Guadagnini was born in, in Piacenza and he started making there and then he moved to Milan and then after that he moved to Parma, where the violin that I play was made. And then after that, which is considered his sort of golden period, if there is one, because I think they're all pretty nice violins, um, in Turin, at the end, his work was very fine. He was quite precise in his work. There are many secrets surrounding the making of these very fine instruments, whether it's in the varnish, whether it's in the minerals in the water that the wood was soaked in, or whatever the secrets are, every violin maker since has been trying to find out what the secret of Stradivarius and his colleagues were. There is so much difference in the sound between a very fine instrument like this Guadagnini and a normal Italian violin, my own violin is, a, is an Italian violin from a very similar time. And I love my own violin, but it's not any, in the league of the Guadagnini at all. And just the, the sonorities that you'll hear and the richness of the tone and the, and the brightness also, and the range of colors available. It just broadens the whole palette of color and texture and everything. <laughs> 